Now remember, dy by dx, uh, otherwise referred to as the first derivative, represents the rate of change of y with respect to x. Okay, the rate at which y is changing. So, really, uh, the derivative, when we find it, will be the gradient of the tangent to the curve at any point. Okay, so once you've got your function, you can substitute in your value of x that you want, and that will tell you precisely the gradient of the curve at that point. Now, what we want to do in this video is look at two examples, okay? I don't know what the equation is. I could give it a guess, okay? But that's not important. The point is that we have two functions, and what I want to do is I want to sketch the gradient function from that, okay? So, what we need to think about is what is the graph showing us? Now, between 0 and 4, we can see that the gradient is positive until it hits 4, where it becomes 0. So you could imagine the gradient, this line going around the curve, getting to 4. So that's when it will be horizontal. So the gradient of that line is 0. And then as we progress back around, we go into negative territory because my line now has negative gradient. So, okay, so let's say we're going to sketch that. Then, um, if we put in this 4, then I know that the gradient function, dy by dx, is 0 when we're at 4. It is positive, okay, between 0 and 4. And it is going to be negative between 4 and 8. So what we'll find is that as we get towards 0, okay, here's where it's positive. There's where it's negative, okay, where it goes below the axis. Now, in all likelihood, this is a quadratic, okay? It doesn't have to be, but if we took it to be a quadratic, then this would definitely be a straight line, okay? Now, as for number two, try and match it up. As for number two, we can see that we are positive, 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 and then at this point, the gradient will be zero. Then we could become negative, and then we get to this point, and we're going to be zero again. And then we get past that point, and we're back to being positive. So we are positive, negative, positive. So positive, negative, so positive, negative, positive, like so. OK? Now, what's interesting about this is that here, if we looked then at the gradient function of the gradient function, so that should be x. If we looked at the gradient function of the gradient function, the rate of change of the gradient function, we can see in this case, okay, we get this kind of parabolic shape. This is a cubic. We've gone to an x squared, a parabola. We can see that the rate of change of um, the gradient function here is changing, okay? So it's zero at that point. So you could then investigate, as the next order of business, the second derivative, looking at the rate of change of the gradient function, like the rate of change of the rate of change, 
okay? And that's something we can also look into.